Hey there, it's Sandy. And today I'm going to tell you why I have so many color pencil sharpeners and use them all the time. For a long time, I used exclusively the Bow Stitch Quiet Sharp, and I've talked about that here on the channel, and here's the reason why. This thing knows when to stop eating your pencil, and that was important to me. I went through a lot of sharpeners that just would keep eating the pencil and eating the pencil and eating the pencil, and so this one I loved. A lot of people said it's too big and too noisy, but there you go. It's just what it is. However, there were some instances when that was not sharp enough. So I have a bunch of handhelds. And this one is an old handheld. You could hear it hardly made any noise. Listen to this guy. That is what a sharp blade sounds like. So if yours is not making the same noise it used to, and it's kind of crunching your pencils in weird ways, that could be why. So get yourself a new one. They're really cheap. Go ahead and get one. And this is my AFMAT that I also introduced recently. There are a number of different brands that have this kind of a pencil sharpener, but it gives you a really long point. And for some people, they get really jealous of the long point. They love it. But look at how not sharp that long point is compared to the quite sharp and compared to what you can get when you use that handheld. Well, this point doesn't go very well into a handheld because it's not the same shape. To sharpen that, they give you a tiny rectangle of sandpaper. And it's very tiny and it's a little awkward to be opening your pencil sharpener all the time in order to use that. And I suddenly had the brilliant idea to use another tool that's been here in the studio forever and it is a stump sander. And I call it a stump sander, but it's actually just a sandpaper block. And <laughs> you could use a sheet of sandpaper, make your own stump sander. I've made my own before. And use that for your pencils. It's really an easy thing to do. It's less work than getting out the inside of the pencil sharpener. And you can sharpen just that tip. It does make a little awkward look for it. It doesn't sharpen the entire long pencil. It just sharpens the very tip, but that's really all you need. You don't need the entire thing to be in that, that needle shape. You just need the tip to be really sharp. Now also, I don't sharpen it that sharp for absolutely everything. On this rabbit drawing, I did not have it that sharp for the whole thing. I just sharpened it for these fine details in the white fur where I'm adding two grays and a black in order to create that texture. So use it exclusively for those kind of details. Don't put yourself through getting that kind of a needle sharp pencil point because you don't really need that. The rest of the blending here was done with blending stumps and a brush and all kinds of things and Gamsol. That didn't require the fine detail of a very, very sharp pencil. So that's my tip for you for today. It's not like super rocket science, but I thought since it's something that I realized all of a sudden in the last couple months, maybe I should share that. And maybe that would help somebody else to get a really sharp pencil. This has been rabbit week, of course, here on YouTube. It's been rabbit week all over social and on my blog today, I've compiled everything there. So you can go get links to anything that you might've missed because I post in crazy places. So you want to go see that. There's also a brand new rabbit on the art-classes.com homepage. And you can go play with that one and see all the new content that I've put on the front page because I finally got around to redesigning it. Also, there is a new color pencil drawing class, and this one is a rabbit. Yeah, you knew it was coming. A rabbit. It's a level five class, so it's an advanced class. And not only do you learn how to do the textures of the rabbit, you'll learn how to add leaves to a picture and how to add grasses to the front, how to make the rocks look like they're going back into the distance and in shadows. And it's taught in polychromos with one Prismacolor pencil. 
So you'll learn about why that is because the different pencils have different properties that work in different ways. Lots to learn there. I hope you have an excellent weekend ahead. I'll be back with a new theme for next week. I think you're going to really like that one. And I'll see you then. Take care. Bye, guys.